Alright, hello guys. Due to popular demand, I am bringing you our third edition of our winter forecast. It's been about three weeks since we've made one, so we've gone ahead and looked at the things that we want to go ahead and tweak. There isn't too many huge differences, but there is some big game-changing tweaks that we did have to make to the forecast due to new and incoming information we have on this year's winter. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in our description for our social medias, including the Instagram, which is super, super cool. I'm going to go ahead and pin that one in the comment. Super cool. We do a lot of exclusive content on that. Now, we're looking at our overall forecast with question marks. At the end of this video, though, we are going to reveal what's underneath these question marks and what all these colors mean. But I just want to give you guys a little sneak peek of what this looks like and stay tuned for the end to see what all these colors have in store for your area. Now, we're going to get started with the precipitation forecast here. And this one hasn't changed too much. I'll tell you, I'll go over it again just in case this is your first winter forecast, but I will tell you what I did change here. You might not notice it right away. Now for California and a lot of the Southwest there, you can see we do have drier than normal conditions, sp specifically in that medium shade of brown there for California. That's where we're expecting, you know, even further below average precipitation. And once we're in that medium shade of brown, Again, moderately below average. It'll be quite noticeable that it's pretty dry this winter. Now we have a lot of light green starting in Montana, moving its way into the Great Lakes, and then also New Mexico and Texas moved all the way to the East Coast, and it kind of does a horseshoe around Missouri and Kansas. Now what I did change in this is we used to have this medium shade of green a lot further inland and not extending to the coast, and we went ahead and extended this one all the way to the coast because we are seeing signals that we are going to have a storm track that could go a little bit further east and actually bring that east coast a lot more precipitation than we originally thought. And I'm leaning more towards that being much more common this winter than I originally thought. So this is the reason why we're extending the above average precipitation further east on this map. Again, the medium shade of green is going to be more moderately above average as far as precipitation is concerned. Now we're going to move on to our temperature forecast. And this one's changed in very similar ways. Now, it's changed more than the precipitation forecast, however. We do have this lighter shade of orange from the Rockies westward. And again, in the lighter shade of orange, this is where we're expecting slightly above average temperatures. But more along the coast in that medium shade of orange, this is where we're expecting moderately above average temperatures. And it will be more noticeable right there along the coast. We have very warm waters out there in the Pacific. And this is going to blow warm air masses onshore. And this is really what's going to lead to a lot of these above average temperatures out west. Now, starting things from the Rockies eastward, however, we have below average temperatures in this light shade of blue. We're dealing with slightly below average temperatures in the medium shade of blue there. We have moderately below average temperatures. And then for that dark blue, the Great Lakes, and we've extended all of this eastward, by the way, I wanted to mention. But in that darker shade of blue, we have, you know, far below average temperatures and it'll be quite noticeable. A lot of those areas in the west, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, we dealt with a lot of below average temperatures similar to this last winter, but I think that that's going to extend much further east. That's going to be the biggest difference this winter uh, as far as the cold air is concerned. Uh, our medium shade of blue and our darkest shade of blue are extended far further eastward than it was in our last outlook, so we are kind of leaning more towards a further east look on the cold air and this is due to our negative NAO. If you want to, you can check out the winter thought series and we talk a lot more about that stuff and kind of the logistics of it. But yeah, we're dealing with much colder air extending much further east than originally expected. Now we're about to move on to our snowfall forecast, but before I do that, we are going to be featuring our three winners of the comment section competition that we had on last winter forecast at the end of this video, and we're going to be doing another one on this video. Now, to enter into the random drawing, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment your city and state, and I might give you a written forecast, but also you'll be entered into the drawing of three random people to be featured in next winter forecast. So go ahead and do that. Pause the video and do that. Now, we're going to move on to our snowfall anomaly forecast here. And you can see, obviously, west of the Rockies, we're going to be dealing with slightly below average snowfall for pretty much everywhere in there. Just because of the drier conditions and warmer air, this is obviously going to lead to a little bit less snowfall than we normally expect. But in our areas with above average precipitation or slightly above average precipitation, the Montana area all the way into the Great Lakes and then Texas all the way to the East Coast, we're going to be dealing with slightly above average snowfall. Now, 
Obviously, South Florida doesn't get snowfall, but I just went ahead and drew in everywhere that's going to be having below average temperatures and above average precipitation, even though you might not see snowfall. Now, our medium shade of blue has moved further east. It extends from Ohio and Tennessee all the way east to the east coast, and it didn't extend all the way to the east coast in our first couple of updates, but now we are moving this further east just like everything else a little bit with that moderately above average snowfall. Now, also, we have this darker shade of blue, and this is where we're expecting much above average snowfall for a lot of that interior northeast, interior mid-Atlantic. All of these areas are going to be experiencing much above average snowfall. Now, we're going to be moving on to a new segment here where we're going to be talking about the different storm tracks for this winter. Now, there's a really cool graphic. You can see it has that line that shows you where the storm tracks on this one. It's the pink one. And then in our darker shade of blue there, we have moderate snowfall. And then outside of that, in the lighter blue, we have light snow or snow showers. This first one is the Alberta Clipper. This one might be pretty common. And this is a lot of the reason why we have above average precipitation for the northern United States. This one's going to track in through Montana then down through some of those middle plains into the Great Lakes, and then back up into the northeast. And this will bring, you know, a good two to six inches of snow from North Dakota through the Great Lakes. And obviously it varies with where the storm tracks and that everything moves south, everything can move north. It all depends on where it tracks. But this is kind of just a general track of what it can take and what it commonly takes. Now, our second one is Miller B Nor'Eastern. You notice the first half of this storm is very similar to that Alberta Clipper track, but it does move eastward. And actually, instead of going inland through the northeast, it goes out to sea through Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, and then it brings icy conditions to a lot of those regions. And then south of you, you experience rain there for southern Virginia, northern North Carolina. Much of, you know, areas to the south of the storm track likely will see rain. Areas to the north, though, we can expect heavy snowfall on shore, depending on where this storm tracks. Again, you can be expecting heavy snowfall to the north of the storm track. And I'm noticing that the snowfall is spelt with one L instead of two. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Uh, sometimes when I type in my computer it, it, twice really fast, it instead just puts one because I'm typing too fast. So that's why that sometimes happens where I misspell things like that. And I apologize for that. Now, storm track number three, this is Miller A Nor'easter. So this one actually starts in the Gulf of Mexico and moves northward over the entire east coast. And you can see for the southeast, that means a lot of rainy conditions there. And then as you move a little bit further north and inland, you get icy conditions there. And then heavy snowfall inland and in the New England states there. You can see very heavy snowfall. These are the type of storms that can possibly bring blizzards for a lot of those areas in the northeast and the interior mid-Atlantic. We see these storms consistently bring very, very big snowfalls. And it just depends on how many of these we see this year, which obviously can't be forecasted. But I do think that it is very possible with that negative NAO setting up that we will see some big nor'easters this winter. It is very possible. Now your fourth and final storm track, we have Appalachian Runner. This one is a more inland track, and we saw a lot of this last winter looks familiar. Rain for the coast, and then a lot of heavy snowfall inland. This is a lot of what we saw last winter, and we're not expecting to see as much of this this year, but it will obviously happen sometimes where we get this far inland track. It beats the trough, and the cold air just isn't in place yet, and we end up getting rain for the coast, heavy snowfall inland for West Virginia, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, areas like that. Now, here's all your storm tracks on screen here. You can see this is where all the tracks go. I just wanted to show all of them. So you can see we are expecting a lot of activity there for the Northeast and the New England states as far as snowfall. Obviously, these will be further east, further west, further south, further north sometimes. But these are the general average tracks of all of these types of storms that we see pretty commonly during most winter seasons. And it's just interesting to have this graphic up here. A lot of people were asking to show storm tracks. So I went ahead and added that to the winter forecast series. I hope you enjoyed that new product that we made. Now for the moment of truth, we are bringing you the overall forecast. Big changes here. We're going to be moving from west to east, breaking down all of these areas. Starting off in California, more dry than normal. You saw that on the precipitation forecast and it will be quite noticeable that it's going to be a pretty dry winter. Now, to the east of you, warmer than normal conditions for a lot of the western United States, specifically west of the Rockies. And for the Rockies, mountain snow, as always, can't really expect those to ever not be the case with those high elevations. We always see that mountain snow, and it is still going to be very, very common this winter. Now, 
to the east of you. Cold at times. It's going to be kind of flip-floppy here. Uh, I expect more cold than warm, but it could warm up at times. But we're going to see these big troughs move in uh, and be pretty brief for you guys in that area. Now to your south, flip-flop pattern. This one's going to be like 50-50, wet at times, warm at times, dry at times, cold at times, all over the place for this region. And flip-flop is a really good description for that. Now, east of you, cool and wet for the southeast. You saw that on a lot of the storm tracks. We could be dealing with more rain than we're normally used to, but it's going to be pretty cool. Not a lot of snow for this area, but pretty cool and wet. Now, to the south of you in Florida, obviously, probably won't be too cool for the southern half of Florida. Probably more just wet than anything and pretty average as far as temperatures. Now, to the north of these regions, we're expecting that winter battle zone to set up somewhere in there. And that's going to bring a lot of mixed events, you know, starting out as snow, moving over to rain, sloppy storms. Never really purely snowstorms and a lot of rainstorms for this area without any snow. But for the most part, your winter storms will be more of a mixed event than anything. Now, to the northwest of that, we see the Arctic Blast region. This is where the coldest of the air is going to set up as these troughs move in. Very, very potent cold air extending pretty far south, further south than last winter, that is. And it's going to be very similar to 2014 to 2015 at times, I believe. And we could see that polar vortex return. It's, you know, never safe to say that for sure. But it is possible that we do see conditions where you'll see on the news, oh, polar vortex is coming in uh, and... It's going to be quite cold for this Arctic Blast region. To the north of you, Clippers for that North Dakota, Montana, Minnesota region. Very, very frequent quick snowstorms that bring two to four inches of snow. Obviously, you get a lot of snow for this area, but no huge snowstorms likely uh, during these Clippers. It's going to be very small, very quick, very frequent snowstorms for this region. Now, we're expecting average lake effect snow in these blue regions, not too far below or above average at this point, not expecting either of those. We're expecting quite close to average lake effect snow. Now, in this white region, that's where we're expecting our worst of winter from West Virginia up through Pennsylvania and then into the New England states, specifically the inland New England states, but we have extended this further east to include a lot of Connecticut, Massachusetts, and coastal Maine all of New Hampshire as well. This is where the worst of winter looks to set up and very frequent snowstorms. You saw it on those storm tracks. Almost all of those bring snow to these regions. And then to the south of you, big coastal storms for this red region. Uh, there could be a couple or a few big coastal snowstorms for these regions, at least you know, for the southern regions, North Carolina, Virginia, you could be dealing with some of those 6 to 10 inch snowstorms that we do see every once in a while for this region. I live in that region. I know that it happens about every other winter. We see one or two of those. And then to the north of you for the east coast, the northeast coast, and, you know, Boston, areas like that, we could be dealing with a lot of those 12 inch plus snowstorms this winter, at least a few of those. And it's going to be quite the active winter, I believe. Now, Thank you so much for watching, guys. I am going to show you guys those comments that won the competition last time. Again, enter yourself into the competition in this video and in next winter forecast, you could be featured in that one. Now, starting out, Gary's Granite said, Granite Oregon, great channel. Thanks. Uh, he's our first winner. I'm assuming it's a he. Uh, thank you so much for commenting and congratulations. You won the random drawing. Now, there was 2,000 comments, so these people are extremely lucky uh, to be featured in this. That It's a 3 in 2,000 chance, so very, very lucky here. Catherine said, one of the best and most accurate channels on YouTube. I live in Vermont, and we always get a ton of snow. Congratulations, you got four likes, so you were towards the top, and I ended up seeing your comment. Very, very lucky there. And then Cheryl Storer said, great forecast. I live in Hillsboro, Ohio. And that one was actually came out two weeks after, or a week or two after the forecast came out. So it was very fortunate that I saw that one. Again, comment down below and you could be featured in next winter forecast. Thank you so much for watching and have a great couple of weeks until I see you guys next time for our next winter forecast.